Okay, hey everybody and welcome to OBS today. Happy Monday. We got we hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. My name is Kendra and this is our biblical content specialist Wendy Blight. Hi Miss Wendy. <laughs> How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. So we have the opportunity to hear from Wendy this morning all about um, what we're learning in our hidden potential study. And it's about the word, word royalty, which for me, it took me a long time to understand what that word even meant, Wendy. And so I'm excited for you to give us a little lesson about it. But before we get started, we would just love to know, how is everyone doing? How was your weekend? Anything exciting happen? Miss Wendy, what about you? Did anything um, out of the ordinary happen this weekend for you? We didn't. We just had a super nice, um, my son is um, home from college with us. And so we just really had a fun time we cooked out on the grill and we just it was just a relaxing nice weekend oh i love that i love grilling summer's a great time to grill yeah it's summer here in the uh united states over on this part of the world and so we love grilling out and doing all that fun stuff i what did i do this weekend it always takes me a minute to think I went to the pool. I went to my aunt and uncle's pool yesterday and we had a just a family little pool party, which was a lot of fun. And I think that was definitely the highlight for sure. It's a simple, That's so fun. Simple time with family. All right. So we have some people hopping on here, Sarah and Frida and Jesse and Linnell. It's so good to see everybody. I think you're really going to enjoy what Wendy has to share. And so Wendy, I'm going to let you take it away. But before I do, just so everyone knows, there are um, people mowing the lawn outside. So I'm going to mute myself so you can just focus on Wendy and not the noise outside my window. So with that, Wendy, you can take it away. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I'm excited because today is Bible study day. You know, we kind of do different things on OBS today, but I always love when it's Bible study day because I get to come and be with y'all. And today what we're going to talk about is um, what it means to stand in God's power and authority. Okay, so Wendy teaches us about frailties. I didn't even know the definition of the word, but Wendy tells us it's something we didn't um, or don't have control over, something we lack basically, but can still be used for God's good and God's for our good and God's glory. And then she talks about how God specializes in us in helping us see our possibilities in the midst of our lack, right? And that's such a good thing um, because when we Feel like we lack something we feel like we can't do anything for God and so but I want to add something else to that yes he helps us see our possibilities but he also can give us confidence in the midst of our lack because of this the power and authority that we have in Jesus so these are the two words we're going to focus on today power and authority power is the ability to do something authority is the right to do something they mean two different things the ability and the right, but they pretty much always go together in tandem. So we're going to go all the way back to Genesis chapter two for just a minute to figure out where this power and authority came from, the history of it in the Bible. So this is when we um, see Satan meeting Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he was basically telling her what God was withholding from her, what she didn't have. And instead of trusting God, she believed Satan, right? So she believed him. And the lies and deceptions that she was lacking something that she could or should have had. But what happened is those lies and that temptation opened the door for both Adam and Eve then to lose confidence in who and whose they were. Meaning their identity as children of God for sure. But also he basically, Satan basically hijacked that power and authority that God gave Adam and Eve to be caretakers over the garden. So they really lost everything. But what's sad for us today is he still continues that. So that had continued all through scripture and he didn't stop his scheming. He still lords this wrongfully stolen power over us today through his lies and deception and manipulation. But his whole goal, as Wendy said this morning in her, in her message, was to keep us from living the full and abundant life God has for us. But... As God always does in scripture, right? In Genesis 3, one chapter later, he gives a solution for this problem. And he issues punishments to Adam and Eve, but we're going to focus on the one to the serpent. And so in Genesis 3, 13 and 
um, Genesis 3, 14 and 15, he says, then the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. And then it says this, he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Those words speak of a savior that's to come in the future. Authority. Yeah, that was Jesus, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so his death and resurrection basically took back that power and authority that was lost in the Garden of Eden. And we especially know it takes back the authority because if we go to Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, it says this, then Jesus came to them and he's speaking to his disciples and said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. That's so comforting for us. It tells us God, the father basically invested in God, the son, Jesus, all authority in heaven and on earth. So anything that Satan took of authority in the garden of Eden is now not in his hands anymore. Jesus has it all power. Yes. Satan still has limited power, but we can be encouraged because of course, Jesus power is greater still. And Jesus has all authority. So either way, Satan's held in check. So the question we talk about today is, do we, you and I really understand that power and authority? and how it's been given to us. And I'm gonna tell you that in a minute, but it's when we realize the full effect of being able to speak and pray and declare the things that we believe that we can walk in that power and authority that's ours and it will change our life, our circumstances, our mind dramatically. And so, yeah, Satan's gonna mess with us, right? He is, mm -hmm. he's gonna to try to tell us we aren't worthy. We're not, we don't have the significance. We don't have the intelligence. Um, all sorts of things. Um, and, and Jesus tells us this, and he says the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking right. to kill, steal, and destroy. So we know we have this enemy, but we don't have to be afraid, right? That's the whole point. The whole point of this message today is the authority that Adam and Eve lost in the garden is mm -hmm. now ours. How do we mm -hmm. know that? Because first it's in the hands of Jesus. But if we go to two verses, that authority has been given to us as children of God. Mm -hmm. So Matthew 18, 19, and 20 says, again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my father in heaven for where two or three gather in my name. There I am with you. Now let's go to John 14, 12 and 14, 12 through 14. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me, will do what I have been doing. And this is what's so cool. It says he will do even greater things, like mm -hmm. even greater things than Jesus was doing because I'm going to the father. And then he says these words, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the son may bring glory to the father. So do you see those three words? When we pray, declare, speak in Jesus name, our words carry power and authority. And it's God given. And we do it knowing that Jesus wants this. That's what he's telling us. This is what he wants for us to do his kingdom work in and through his children to release that power, to release that authority into the kingdom, to bring change, to bring um, change in life. And one of the greatest ways to do this is um, through praying God's word. And we talk about that a lot here. But Luke 137 is a verse that says Nothing is impossible with God. I could like teach 10 minutes just on this by itself. But what this word means, if you go back to the original language, there's two ways to read this. Every word of God shall not be powerless or no word spoken by God is without power. Do you know what that's saying? It's saying when we speak and pray God's word, he infuses it with power and then it carries his authority behind it. And so when we do that, we have to just be so confident in what we're praying and speaking and declaring. But I want to share a story of how this came alive in my own life, because it's one of those life-changing moments for me. And that is my husband and I went to Baylor. I had a really good friend there named Lendy. Kendra, I think has met her at my daughter's wedding, but she sort of influenced my faith. And then we both moved to, to um, 
Dallas and practice law at the same firm. We were known as the Blendies because I had the big brown hair. It's kind of gray now. And she had the big blonde hair. That's so we fun. <laughs> I know. Um, but when I, then my husband and I moved to Charlotte. So he surprised me years later to, with a visit to Lindy. And I was so excited because she had really been a mentor to me and showed me what it was like to walk with Jesus. And um, so while we were there, the last day, she was, we went on a walk and she said, can I pray over you? And I said, I would love that. So we were going to do that after the walk. But what I haven't told y'all is in those years in Charlotte, I began, I started a Bible study in my house with just 12 girls. It was great. Within a few years, we grew to over 100 women and we had to meet in our church. But with over 100 women attending, pastors popping in to see how we were doing, all of a sudden, my lack of education hit me in the face. Like I had no seminary training, no biblical training. I hadn't even taken a single Bible class. And so all of a sudden, I have all these women standing in front of me in a room and I was a lawyer for heaven's sake. And then a stay at home mom and then decided, oh, I can teach the Bible, you know? And so I would stand up on that podium and I would feel nauseous and anxious. And I didn't ever tell anyone, not even my husband, because I felt like a, an imposter. But when, but I knew that day when Lindy laid her hands to pray on me, she prayed over my family. She prayed over my marriage, but all of a sudden she anointed my head with oil. And then she began to pray words that were like a healing balm. And this is what she prayed over me three times. Wendy, you are worthy. Now you remember, I didn't say a word to her about what was going on in my heart. And then she said, you are worthy. And then she cut my hands. She lifted my chin. She said, look in my eyes. And she said, God wants me to tell you, you are worthy for this call that he's given you. And I knew that even though I hadn't told anybody, God knew what I needed to hear because he put that on my heart, right? He gave me that call. And I looked up what the world said and people in, all around me, Beth Moore, Lisa Turkers, all these people. And I was like, who am I? And that's what Satan wanted. He, God just has me in this little corner of the world teaching the word, but I got my confidence back. And um, since that day, I've been teaching and writing and I've taken a seminary class here or there, but it's still just me and God until he you know, may educate me more. And so I want to, us to close today saying to not um, listen to the lies of the evil one. When you feel you have a place of lack in your life, don't let him manip manipulate you. Don't let him let you focus on that lack and tell you you aren't equipped and that you aren't worthy and you don't have what you need. Um, because I will tell you, I heard those same lies when I was a young mother, a, a, a lie that said, you aren't qualified for this. You're an only child. You hardly babysitted. But worse than that is I had a bad relationship with my mom. And so I, I heard Satan saying, what makes you think you can be an even better mom, even a good mom? And but what happened was once again, he put mentors in my life and he put his word in front of me. And I began to realize I am a good mom because he gave me a child and he gave me a second child and he will give me what I need. And so I'm saying today, as we close, y'all don't listen. Don't even let Satan put a single toe in the door where you feel you have a lack or a frailty. Just take it right to Jesus and his word, because there are two forces at work. We've seen this since Genesis, good and evil, Satan and Jesus. And the one, and you can guess who it is, will always keep us focusing on our lack. And we'll always make sure we never see our potential. And the other will always say, who are you? You are a child of God. What do you stand in? You stand in my power of authority. You are valuable. You are saved. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. You are loved. You are equipped. And so we don't fight this battle alone. We fight with Jesus. First John 4, 4 says, the one who lives in me is greater than the one who lives in the world. And second Corinthians 12, nine and 10 that Kendra mentioned in the video this morning, um, Paul says, my power is made perfect in weakness so that I cannot, you, you boast all the more, but not in yourself, but in God. So as we close, I just want to give you some words to take your eyes off your lack. 
stand in that power and authority that is yours in Christ Jesus. Pray in that power and authority that is yours in Christ Jesus. Speak and move forward in that power and authority. And then if you just give me one second, will you look me in the eye? I know I can't see you, but I want to say what Lindy said to you. I want to tell you, you are worthy. You are worthy. And don't let anybody tell you different. Thanks. Wendy, um, you have given many, many messages on OBS today and in our videos, but that one, just the confidence that exuded out of you and just spoke <laughs> to me and our OBSers was probably one of my top favorites. And so thank you for sharing a story about you and Lindy and just for um, sharing from your heart. I know that's something that I needed to hear about standing confident and praying God's word and claiming that victory that is ours in Jesus Christ. And so thank you for that reminder. You're welcome. Uh, I want to encourage you, Wendy, I know you always do because you're so good about um, engaging with our OBSers, but so many women are saying, amen, yes. <laughs> one one um, sweet lady even asked who you, you are. And so I do want to just remind everyone that um, who is speaking to you today is a Wendy Blight, and she is on our online Bible studies team here at Proverbs 31. And she helps make sure that we are as biblically accurate as we can be and brings God's brings God's word to us in a way that we can understand and relate to. And so, Wendy, thank you so much for your message today. Um, and just for starting our week four of Hidden Potential off on a very great note. Thank you. Oh, so you're welcome. Thanks for having me. I look forward to next time. Yes. All right, everybody. We hope you guys have a wonderful day and week, and we will see you back here next Monday at 9 a.m. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye.